All right, Jen Cooper here with two Dash players you do not want to mess with. Um, <laughs> one, Megan Klingenberg, because, you know, the third degree black belt. Oh, yeah. You know, aside from the stories we've heard about your language on the field, but <laughs> I, I will not mess with you. Language. And then Becky Edwards, I think, uh, looking at the stats, you've suffered the most fouls, and I think committed the most fouls for the teams. But that's kind of your, but that's kind of your role, right? <laughs> it is. I'm, I'm always in on the action. So. Yeah. She's the enforcer. I mean, it, yeah, if, she, if she's not doing that in midfield, yeah. something's she's not, the enforcer. not getting done. All right, so season is 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 winding down. There's uh, six games to play for you guys. There's, you guys have more games to play than anybody else because of that the Sky Blue Houston game that hasn't been rescheduled. Now, mathematically, the dash is still in it, and thankfully, the teams above the dash have kind of been helping out. They keep throwing away points. We don't know why they would do that, but uh, but they keep doing that. So. Dash have a pretty tough stretch uh, over, over the next week. You got Seattle at home tomorrow, then you're at Portland, then at Seattle. So, you know, what's what's the mood in the team going in? What's the game plan for? All right, you know, this is a tough road to hope, but we can do it. Well, I think that over our last couple of results, we can see our team getting better. We've been playing more organized defense, and we didn't let in a goal. Well, debatably, we didn't let in a goal. There last was no game. goal on the score sheet. Exactly. So. Um, I think that in that respect, we've been getting a lot better, like more organized and not giving up easy goals or easy shots. So I think that we're looking forward to taking on the challenge of taking, like playing the best team in the league twice in Portland on paper. They're a great team, even though they haven't gotten maybe the best results this year so far. Um, I think I'm excited personally to see kind of like where our defense and our organization kind of stacks up. Um, and just see like how far we've come and how much further we have to be. Because defensively, you know, Saturday, you guys looked really strong against Chicago. Um, you know, first first dash game ever, I think, that went scoreless on, on, Second, both, right? on both sides. Oh, uh, scoreless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scoreless, yeah. Um, you know, Marissa had some great, great moments to strip Christian press of the ball, and, you know, Aaron had some great saves. So defensively, I thought the team looked really strong, but, you know, what would the team have to do to maybe get something on the other side of the field? Um, I think that's all Becky. <laughs> well, I think, um, you know, defensively, once we win it, I think if we can keep the ball and keep it higher up the field, uh, we'll start creating more chances. And, um, you know, our forwards have been have been dangerous at times. So if we can get that more consistent and more uh, combination plays and kind of vary our attack in different ways, then we should be a, a bit more successful. But we do have a lot of talent. We have a lot of goal scorers, and I think it's just um, – putting that all together, and I hope we can get that together in the last few games this season. You know? Next Tuesday, Under-20 Women's World Cup kicks mm -hmm. off in Canada, mm -hmm. and you guys have both been part of an Under-20 Women's World Cup team. Yes, we have. Um, 2008, 2006 or 2008? Hey, girl. Hey, girl. We thought you were old. No. You know, Clayton won the World Championship, U-20, and the College Cup in the same day. Wow, a few hours you were in Chile and the U.S. in the same day. Yeah. We cluttered. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we <yeah. laughs> Well, tell tell us about that experience. Some you know playing that tournament in Chile and you know the final against North Korea and and, and how that whole t whole experience made you probably a, a better player and more experienced professional. Well, I think probably for Becky, I mean, it's one of our fondest soccer yeah. memories. Um, the team that Tony put together, we didn't necessarily bring like the star players of the day. And everybody kind of thought we were going to just be killed and fizzle out in the first round. Um, but it was really cool because uh, the way that we played together and the way that we fought for each other made us the best team in the tournament. And so it was an incredible experience and I loved every second of it. And I like, only hope that like I can play in a World Cup again so I can like have that feeling because it was one of the coolest feelings that I've ever been a part of and, and being around a team that was like so focused on one goal and like playing for each other was a very special, special thing that is really, uh, it's like you don't get to be around that on every team that you're on and so when you do get to be on that and experience that it's something you get to cherish for a long time so. Well, it's interesting that you say that Tony didn't bring the stars of the day, because when you look at the roster from that team, well, he brought the stars of tomorrow, which I think is really the benefit of these Youth World Cups. So Sydney LaRue ended up getting the golden ball and the golden shoe for the tournament. 
Uh, I think Alex got the silver ball. Alex Morgan in the in the bronze shoe. Mm-hmm. Alyssa Nair got golden gloves. So yeah. you know, and then six years later, it's like we also see got the FIFA players. Fair Play Award. I just want to even with your language. <laughs> yes, even with my language. <laughs> <laughs> Even with your black belt. I did get one yellow card, but I will say that it was not my fault, and I'm still saying that Alex Morgan, that was on you. <laughs> was it like you picked up the ball for a late throw in? And yeah, she was like, come, okay, okay, okay. She like puts it down, she's like, clean. I was like 15 yards away, so like sprinted. Did that come out? Uh, I don't remember which one it was, but oh, I was so like, you got really? the delay of game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, still her fault. They said I touched the ref. Like I was debating a foul and I touched the ref. Maybe, so I <laughs> That's on, but you're a captain. Can't you do that? That's what I thought. I thought captains could slap. I, I mean, I definitely saw that in this one's World Cup. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, so we've got a game against Sydney tomorrow night. And, you know, she's just one of many people out there. But uh, how... You know, what's, the, what's the, the strategy for shutting down Sydney? There's a lot of people, obviously, in South that need yeah. to be shut down, but, you, you know, I would think you would know her pretty well. I think uh, mainly we just need to be aware of they're good at getting Sid in good places and getting her in behind, and when Sid gets in behind and gets her run uh, full speed, then that's when she's at her best, and she's a great finisher. So I think that we just need to be ready to drop early and, and often, and it's okay if we get the ball in front of us because... Um, chasing Sid is going to be a difficult uh, issue, so I think that as long as we keep the game in front of us and get numbers behind the ball, then uh, if we stay organized and, and get in the tackles that we need to get in, then we'll be able to like contain them a bit more, but clearly they're one of the most potent offense in, in the country, so uh, it'll be a challenge regardless of how many players we have behind the ball. Do you think the heat will give you guys a little bit of an advantage? I mean, this is Seattle's first time to play in Houston, and they were complaining about it this morning. But of course, the game's not going to be at, at noon. Yeah, I definitely hope so. Uh, I mean, they're a possession-oriented team; they can keep the ball. Um, so, and I think we're, you know, early in the early in the season, we were very high pressing, but we can't do that for 90 minutes in this heat. So, um, like Kling said, we'll have to try and disrupt their service into their forwards, and um, when. When Little, when Sid get on the ball, we'll have to not let them turn and run at us because they're so dangerous when they can get full speed and um, do it what they want, what they want with the ball. Yeah, and I, I don't see them sitting back just because they're, you know, what sixteen one and three on the season. Um, you know, I've I've heard from some people it's like, oh, they can cruise the rest of the season. I'm like, I don't think Laura Harvey would accept that. I, we've seen her be pretty upset with a tie. I don't think the so players it's, it's would like, accept that. I don't think. Yeah, I, don't, I don't. I don't think any professional athletes would be like, oh, we've done enough. It's like, no, you're wired to perform at the mm-hmm. highest level. And just, yeah, it'll be exciting. I think it's it'll be true. A very exciting game. But also, you have to like the heat is seriously a factor. I think people come down here and they're like, oh, it's going to be a factor. But no, it is the factor when coming down here. And, it was like a 20 degrees difference between Chicago and here, and it felt like it was winter in Chicago. So. Wow. So, um, it's especially with so many games on the schedule, I think it's, um, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's good that we're, we're pretty used to the heat. So. Yeah, and then you guys get a nice break from the heat, a uh, two-game jaunt up to the Pacific Northwest. What's that going to be like for you to go back to Portland? Yeah, I'm excited. It'll be fun. It's always a, Portland always brings the fans. They always bring the atmosphere, and, um, It'll be great. I mean, the game's on national television, so it'll be fun to, to play against a great opponent on um, in front of a nice crowd and on TV. Yeah, they're trying to sell it out. I think they're already at uh, I think they have. tickets. I think they absolutely have. Nice. It's pretty cool. Nice. What is it like playing on turf? I mean, compared to, did it, it, does that change the game for you guys, or you're just so used to it that, okay, so you're going to Providence Park, you're going to Memorial Stadium for Seattle, it's turf, it's just, I just put on a different pair of shoes. <laughs> well, I think, um, I mean, the, the types of turf are so different in this league, too. You know, Chicago and Harvard are, are much older turf, where Portland is a, a newer turf. It feels a little bit more like grass, but um, I think just playing on so many different surfaces and, and playing last year in the league as well has, has helped, you know, and I know what I'm getting into. And, um, yeah, it certainly is different, but I think if you prepare for that difference and know kind of what you're getting into, then it doesn't affect it. But always nice to play on grass, in my opinion. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys ready for some under twenty women's World Cup trivia? Oh gosh. 
<laughs> These trivia questions are They're really hard. Yeah. Take it easy well, on the biggest look good. That, that's why I you know I kept it really topical to this under twenty <laughs> women's world cup. Okay. You know, and we've already mentioned some of the answers. Oh. So I think you guys could do yellow cards. Seriously. Okay. When was the first ever youth women's world cup back when it was under nineteen? Okay, so, but was that the U19 and the U20? I feel like this is a trick question. No, 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 not a trick. It, U19, which, so, because U19 became U20, so I'm yeah. considering all the same term. Okay. So when was the very first one? No trick question. I know there was was it? it was yeah, but was there one before that or not? I don't know. That was with Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Do the math on how old Erin is, basically. Wow. <laughs> so, 11, 11 years. years. 2003. Well, she might not have been 20. No, it has to be even. Would it be 2002 or something? She might not have been 20 either. Uh, there's one in Canada, too. Is that before or after Thailand? That was like Heather O'Reilly's age. So day. she's... But I think Thailand... I think Canada was before Thailand, if you think so. Because Ashlyn yeah. played in it, and she was really young then. And Chalupa and them, they played in it. Okay, so what year was that? Do we have to know the year, or we just have to know the place? Yeah. I think it's 2002. Because it can't, because if I was so 2008, it's every ago. two years. It can't be an even, it can't be an odd number. Right. So that would be six years before us. So are those players six years before us? Yeah, that sounds right. Because Aaron's 31. Yeah. So 2002. And yeah! So the first oh, two, the first two were under 19. So okay. Canada and Thailand were under 19, and then it became U20. So where have the U20s been? 2006 was held in. I know it's Russia. 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 2008. Where did you Chile. guys go? 2010 was in. Germany. 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 Then Japan. And then 2012 in Japan. All right. So yes. do you remember who won the tournament? So 2002 was who was the champion? American. Americans. Americans. <laughs> uh, 2004. We, I know we didn't win. That was the one in Thailand. They yeah. Went, uh, they got third. Um, I feel like I want to say Spain, but I don't think that's right. I was going to say Norway. <laughs> Germany. <laughs> but like, Germany. <laughs> uh, 2006. We didn't win that one either. Germany. North Korea. Uh, and then 2008? Uh, which one was that? That was Germany. Germany. That was Germany. Germany. Oh, they didn't win. They, they won. They won, yeah. Germany won. And then no, we they won the last one. Yeah. USA won in 2012. Yeah. yeah. All right, who won the Golden Gloves at the 2010 tournament? I know this. Bianca. Bianca Henning. Dang, that was my last trivia. Good job. <laughs> So you remembered <laughs> who? Okay, who won the golden ball and the golden shoe in two thousand eight? That's Sid. Lay root. And then who won the silver ball that year? Alex. No, was it Alex Morgan? Oh, but yeah. she won the bronze shoe. Bronze shoe. shoe. Yeah. It's so confusing sometimes. Okay, now this is here's your here's your one hard one that I don't expect you to get. Oh, come on. All right. Which country? There's only one country that has more than one golden ball winner. So that's. Canada. 
So Sinclair in 2002 and Brittany Timko in 2004. So I hope I didn't type that wrong. But anyway, all right. See, see, you can totally master this. It's <laughs> hard. <laughs> you, you, you got you got the cerebral. You got we the martial were, arts. I mean, we tried really hard. All right. Well, I hope you guys kick some ass tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. And Thanks we'll see for you having us. Thanks.